everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric on our continuing series, Survival Horror Sanctuary, where I took a look at some of my favorite rare or obscure survival horror games of all time. And today we're taking a look at Galarian's. It's a sci-fi themed survival horror game, and so far we've only shown you traditional style survival horror games, so it should be a fun time. And interestingly, this game was made by a company, Polygon Magic, who would go on to make Silent Hill the arcade for Konami. So they've got a really interesting development history. Before we get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell it definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down there as well. But I really love everything Galarians is doing because it's using the survival horror format but telling a unique and interesting story with a lot of sci-fi elements because basically our main character here was just injected with two different drugs that were either supposed to give him telekinesis abilities or would have killed him and made him brain dead obviously we know which version of that happened but the game has a lot of interesting attacks and they're all based on that drug that you were just injected with and it is a little interesting you have to charge them up and then execute them so as you first get out into this main area here it really doesn't give you any information on how to attack so in the first five seconds it's a little confusing but you'll see as we are able to charge up those psychic abilities and go into this overcharged state our opponent's head just literally explodes it's exactly like the movie scanners i'm sure that's where they got a lot of the elements from this game from because there are a lot of similarities but just like any Resident Evil style survival horror game, we're going to have to be picking up a lot of different supplies. Unfortunately, they do not glow in this game. You basically have to click on almost everything. But we got a recovery capsule, and that's the main hook of this game. As you'll see, every time we use one of those charged attacks, our HP continues to drain until we take the right pill to get out of this status and be able to continue on throughout the game. So resource management is a huge deal. You're going to have to worry about keeping enough medicine on you to progress through the game. I really like that mechanic because it adds extra suspense and strategy to your playthrough, but I know some people may be turned off by that. But you can't be turned off by exploding heads it doesn't matter how many times I see that it's incredible but if you don't want to go into the overcharged state you can use a charged fire attack and literally create fire from your mind and it burns your enemies to the ground not sure why the enemies are continually walking towards me knowing I can light their friends on fire but hey that's just what they're gonna do but everything that Galarians is doing is new and interesting and unique while still using the survival horror tropes that we know and love. And the story in this game is quite intriguing. I don't want to give too much away because I do hope if you've never played this game before, you do go and play it after the video. But it has a lot of different ethical questions on medical experimentation in the sci-fi genre. And I really do like that it's not just a zombie outbreak. All of the opponents basically that you are fighting throughout this game are other human beings. So it's not that same story survival horror story where there's zombies or mutated animals or the like that it is that you're trying to fight. And it does have an absolute ton of FMV cutscenes, and I would say, while the voice acting isn't spectacular, it is much better than what we were used to getting in the PlayStation 1 era. It doesn't have as much cringy dialogue, so that's definitely a plus. And you'll see here that we can also use the charged attack just to knock our enemies back until they die. And everything is resource management. We have our health points, we have our action points, we have our Nalcon, which is one of the drugs. So you need to decide what attack you want to use and when to be able to clear out certain enemies because if you run out of any of these gauges obviously health points you die but other ones you will lose your ability to attack and you just need to run and a lot of the game is deciding whether it's worth attacking your opponent or whether you should just let them go because you'll see here this guy was giving me particular trouble and I decided hey it's probably better to kill him but you'll see that we also just have a random psychic ability where we put our hand out there is so many hot spots in this game that you don't realize that are there. If anything looks interesting, what you want to do is use your psychic ability on it because more often than not, you're going to be getting a cutscene. If we walk up to this mirror here and use our psychic ability, we're going to get a little bit of information about who we are and what we're doing. So definitely always be thinking about if something looks interesting using that ability. And I like that, that there's more story in the game that you need to suss out. And you could go through the game and miss a lot of the important storyline elements. But as good as this game looks and plays, it also has a really interesting and intriguing soundtrack. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and tell you more why if you never played Galarians, you're missing out. But enjoy. Ah! Ah! Don't let 
It's not so much soundtrack as it's this low mechanical hum that really makes you feel like you're in this super futuristic, maybe space station, maybe research development facility. I don't want to tell you, you'll find out from the story, but the sound effects of the guards heads popping is just perfect. And I love that visceral reaction. It's unfortunate that their heads actually aren't caved in. It must've just been a hole from the back, but it is still a ton of fun to see and listen to. But like I said earlier, resource management and item finding in this game is paramount. And that is my one complaint about it is that none of the items glow. I found a pill of Nalcon on the shelf here, but you would never know it was there. So you do kind of have to bump up against everything and hit buttons so that when we do run out of action points, we're able to get more. And they do slowly recharge or those pills are going to be really important. So if there is, like I said, one strike against this game, it's that finding items sometimes can be a little bit more difficult than I wish it really was. And you'll see here that the guards do have some interesting motions. They'll hop back and forward, giving you enough time to try charge that attack, but like I said, you don't have to kill them all, and a lot of times it might be advisable, but there's no real stealth element, but you can sneak up on them in the game and attack them before they attack you, and that's definitely going to be a wise strategy, because towards later parts of the game, you're definitely going to start getting less pill drops, and you're going to really need to manage your inventory as well as possibly. So you see there, that guard really wasn't posing me too much of a danger, so I ran right past him. And these two scientists here are a little dumb, you can totally light them on fire before they even see see you. So I would say this game is difficult for the resource management portion, but actually killing the enemies isn't so hard. It's just a lot more strategy. But like I said earlier, with that psychic ability, you'll see here we found a number on the wall and that's going to be important. But if we walk up to the chair in the middle of the room and use our psychic abilities, we're going to get different cutscenes. So enjoy those for like 20 seconds and I'll be right back. So clearly the entire point of this facility is to do experiments on children, and that's not a topic that you get a ton in video games. I mean, you obviously get medical experimentation, but children are usually off the limits as far as games are concerned, or they used to be. It's definitely changed as time has gone on, but that's a surprising element to Galarians. But you'll see there we use the freezer key, and we need to come in here and get a fuse, because there's an area of this facility that doesn't have power currently, and we need to restore power. And that seems to be a real big trope of survival horror, because in Resident Evil 1.5, I've used either already shown it to you guys or we'll show it to you shortly you also need to find a fuse to restore power I actually think you just need to restore the power from a generator but powering up unpowered areas in survival horror games just seems to be in pretty much like 80 percent of the games because we open this chamber here this weird eyeball just floats by not in a head and we don't know why we'll discover later on what's going on in the world of galarians but with a lot of these videos i just want to intrigue you into wanting to play the game i don't want to spoil it for you i want to just show you enough to make you say hey i've never heard of this before i've never played it before it looks really interesting i want to check it out because this game to me has a lot of parasite e vibes as far as the storyline is concerned but you'll see here we've turned that smoke off and now we have to go take that fuse and power up a different area in the game so we can continue on with the story. But yeah, that is Galarians. If you've never played it before, I 100% recommend you check it out. I love everything it's doing, the way it handles attacks and the story. If you have any questions or comments, so leave them down below. Love chatting with you guys. You tell me, have you played Galarians? Did you check it out? Did you enjoy it? Did you not like it? Or have you never heard of it before? Short of that, I will be back next Tuesday with an episode in the Survival Horror Sanctuary series, and I'll have videos on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday as well. But yeah, if you're looking for a new PlayStation 1 era survival horror game to play, you can do a lot worse than Galarian's. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.